Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and today I've got a really exciting and fun tutorial for you on the amazing now free twin motion. So any of you can download this amazing software and recreate this visual of Minas Tirith from Lord of the Rings if you want to. So you'll notice that I also did a quick tutorial on uh, using the AI visualizer for this particular model and I got some really nice results. So if you're interested in that, check out the other video on the channel. Other than that though, let's just jump in and I really do hope you enjoy the video. Do remember to reach out to me if you're interested in twin motion or training as well. So let's get started. Thanks for watching everybody and enjoy. Well everybody, let's get started with this new twin motion tutorial to recreate Minas Tirith from Lord of the Rings. So the very first thing I'm going to do is basically uh, in my Vectorworks software, just basically I've imported the model. Um, this was an FBX file supplied by the amazing Adam Z. Uh, I definitely encourage you to look at this chap's channel. He does the most amazing videos on ArchViz. In fact, his channel is called Learning ArchViz. So I basically purchased this model and I imported it as a SketchUp file um, using Transmuter to actually convert it from the FBX file format into a SketchUp file format that I could easily import into Vectorworks. Now, if you haven't tried uh, Transmuter, make sure you check out the link in the channel. It's a fantastic bit of software that if you're a SketchUp user or pretty much uh, a Vectorworks user, it's something you could definitely do with. Right, so here we are in the Twinmotion software now. And um, basically what we're gonna do is go ahead and import our file from Vectorworks. Now I just exported it previously as a Cinema 4D file. And what I'm gonna do is open up this wonderful new template that Twinmotion have produced uh, called Iceland. Um, this is sort of designed as an automotive template really, but there's no reason why we can't use this for other things. And that's exactly what I'm planning to do. Now, as you can see, it's an absolutely stunning environment they've created. Um, really is absolutely brilliant. Um, there's lots of detail, this lovely Icelandic type landscape. So we're gonna go ahead and click import. We're gonna import the uh, Cinema 4D file of Minas Tirith uh, directly from Vectorworks into Twinmotion. I'll just make the point, I could have also imported the native SketchUp file or the FBX file as well. So you know, the import file format is up to you. So here we are, the model has now landed in uh, our environment and you can see the whole model is pretty huge as you would expect with this kind of project. So I should be able to select the whole model here and move it around uh, within my environment and sort of try and place it in the, you know, the perfect zone here. So I'm just kind of, kind of moving around in twin motion using the navigation keys. I'm actually going to kind of drag and drop a few new materials and textures on my kind of grass, if you like. And basically, let's go ahead and, you know, get the file saved. So I always tend to do this once I've done a few major moves and imported the, the drawing. I like the comfort of having it saved. Then we can kind of crack on and carry on working without worrying. You know, if we crash or anything, we're going to lose all the progress we've made. So... You know, even without really doing much at all, you can see that it looks actually pretty good. Um, the model itself of Minas Tirith by Adam Z is unbelievable, and it really is a very nice model to buy. It's only $5. Um, you know, that was an absolute bargain, and really congratulate him for modeling this up. What an enterprise this was. Now, already you can see in twin motion, um, the visualization is looking pretty good. We've got this lovely backdrop with these wonderful mountains. Uh, we've got this really nice sort of foreground with lots of detail of things like the rocks and uh, the terrain and so on. But, you know, we're not quite there yet. It's not how I really want this to be. So what I'm going to do is basically just adjust a little bit of the lighting. And I'm really kind of like searching for one of the two sort of few views that I'm thinking of creating. You can see that I've got a bit of a road uh, modelled in my kind of Vectorworks model that I actually added in Vectorworks. I really just want to rotate that model um, until we can uh, position the building just so that road sort of sweeps down the valley there. Now, I can also, you'll notice, pick up some of the environments that uh, Twinmotion have kind of, you know, loaded in, if you like, and I can manipulate those as required. So this is very, very easy for me to sample and modify the parameters of that wonderful landscape. Now, I'm beginning to sign, sort of feel like I've got a view that I'm relatively happy with. Um, we're going to do a bit of refinement on this. And really, I just want to kind of increase uh, the fidelity of some of those materials and things like the textures. 
So I'm just going to drag on a nice texture here and I think I'll need to do a bit of texture scaling. Things like adding a bit of grunge as well is always good. So look, you know, if you know Twinmotion, you'll know that it ships with absolutely tons of materials and textures as well. So I'm just kind of searching for the right one to drag onto the castle itself. So once we find this, it's going to be a little bit of work to do in terms of adding it to all the various pieces because you can see that the model I've imported has actually come through with lots of different sort of materials um, applied. So it's going to take a bit of time to actually sort of drag and drop these uh, one by one, um, but it's fairly, fairly quick. Once you've actually got them in the dock there, you can see I can just drag and apply to all those various surfaces. That's why I've speeded up the video a little bit at this stage, just so you can kind of see me uh, doing the work here. So, um, you know, we'll just kind of speed up the video now while we do the material application to the main castle itself and a few adjustments. And hopefully you'll see, you know, how rapidly this model will come together and start looking pretty cool. <music> Okay, so after that little time lapse, you can see we've now applied pretty much all the materials uh, to the model itself, the main model. That took a little while. Um, I could have actually simplified that process probably by maybe purging some of those materials, maybe in Vectorworks and combining them into one giant material. Just kind of realized that that would have saved a bit of time. But you know, we learn from experience. Um, I'll probably spot a few extra bits that I need to modify as I'm going around the model, but I'm okay with that. Um, you know what, until I actually set the views up, there's not much point in doing all the work um, because there might be areas of the model I'm working on that of course I might not see. So I would encourage you to do the bulk of the work uh, once you've actually chosen the views that you actually do want to uh, refine and finalize. So you can see I'm just sort of doing those fine little touches. Um, also, the next thing I want to start to do is really look at how to actually set up these key views. So look, this is where I think Twinmotion is one of the best softwares on the market for this kind of work. The fact it's real time, it's easy uh, for you to navigate around. And basically, look, I can even duplicate these giant mountains at the click of a button. You know, how amazing is that to be able to move mountains in your 3D software literally so easily just to kind of create a slightly different sort of view and so on. So I can even increase things like the scale Make that mountain a bit steeper or a bit you know a bit sort of more uh, different to the other one really by making it um, scaled so this kind of thing is unbelievably easy in twin motion next up i'm going to basically go through and drag up my sort of couple of views that i've chosen you can see there's all these uh, default views in the model um, that twin motion have generated for that automotive template and what's nice about those is the lighting and the hdris are actually really really good um, but, you know, I want to just modify the scene itself. I can see there's a whole bunch of trees as well uh, that were actually part of the template. So I can actually select all of those as a group and basically manipulate them and move them and reposition them to uh, maybe a slightly different location. So, you know, a lot of the assets in that wonderful template that Twinmotion have created, I can actually really make use of for my own needs in this new project here. Okay, so we are going to now move on to one of my absolutely favorite tools that Twinmotion has is basically the populate tool to actually be able to kind of drop foliage and things like trees, rocks and other elements as well. So all I need to do is go to uh, my Dropbox, drag across maybe those pine trees that I'm thinking would go quite nicely in this environment, adjust my brush size and the diameter of my brush and things like the density and then you'll literally see I can just paint this absolutely immense landscape with thousands of trees in honestly just a few moments. So this is a really fun bit of the process. I'm going to speed up this next part of the video while I do this painting. Let's put some good music on. Just enjoy uh, how I kind of, you know, add more trees here. 
And if you do make a little mistake, don't worry, you can always kind of get the eraser and sort of rub out a few sections as well. As I can see, I painted a few on the model there by mistake. So, you know, clicking the path tracing button already uh, gives me a bit of a sense of the view that's going to look pretty amazing. And we can basically select some of those other views that we don't need and maybe just delete those just to tidy up. Just so I'm left with my kind of views that I'm actually going to create. Now I also like to uh, be able to kind of like pick up some of the elements of the landscape that came with this wonderful scene and just sort of reposition those a little bit and maybe you know duplicate them and copy them as well just to kind of get a bit more visual interest into you know the actual view that I'm thinking of using. So this is starting to come together rather nicely now. Now we're going to go and focus a little bit on the um, sort of lighting and the environment a bit. Just before we do that though, let's focus on our camera settings. So don't forget you've got things like the uh, grid that you can use. Composition grid is really, really useful. Uh, it kind of enables you to really kind of study things like the rule of thirds very visually and just set that, you know, perfect camera shot up uh, just like a photographer would do. And I think this is where Twinmotion excels again. You know, the idea that you can kind of like virtually set up lots of photos or kind of like shots, if you like, before then you come back and maybe choose your final rendering style. Don't forget to play with things like the exposure levels, um, things like the depth of field as well can be quite good. And of course, things like the intensity of the HDRI. Now, sometimes you kind of experiment and as you can see on screen at the moment, things go a little bit wrong. Uh, basically, I need a bit more brightness and basically I need to increase the exposure just so I've got a little bit more light in the scene. But it's OK because it's so quick and so rapid to do. Um, you know, you can quickly play around until you're getting where you need to be. In traditional rendering software, this was an absolute pain. You know, you had to kind of set up the lighting, re-render, maybe wait five, ten minutes. If it wasn't right, so then you could have another go. One of the things I love about Twin Motion as well is the ability to create this atmospheric uh, changing of things like the weather. And it's extremely dynamic, the fact that you can actually play around with the time of day. And here you can see I'm able to kind of go uh, quite snowy or rainy or even like slightly post rain and just explore whether these particular views, you know, look better with or without different sort of weather conditions as well. Just to get, you know, exactly the feeling of that sort of nice wintry look maybe on some scenes, uh, but a bit more of a kind of lush sort of autumnal or summer look in others. I really can't think of any other software that enables me to do this as well, apart from maybe Unreal Engine, which of course is much more complex than Twin Motion. So I think you'll agree the scene is really coming together. Now I'm basically going to zoom in to a slightly sort of uh, higher level of a zoom factor and basically just sort of finish off adding a few more trees uh, into my scene. So this time I'm going to go to my Dropbox and drag in things like some rocks and a few more sort of plants and things like this. Going to go back out let's get some nice sort of ferns in there as well these always look really really good and basically the great thing with the dropbox is you can go come back to it any time um you know and actually kind of like add all of that lovely detail look at that i'm just painting with rocks these are really nice high quality materials i can go in and modify the density and the amount and the different mixtures uh, post editing just to kind of create that lovely lovely extra bit of detail down for those nice eye level views and so on as well. So now when I kind of turn the snow back on, back onto my actual save view, you can see all those lovely rocks in the foreground that basically have snow on them, um, you know, as soon as you kind of paint them in. I, you know, it's pretty amazing. It blows my mind how this software does what it does. But, you know, this is built on the power of Unreal Engine. So the great thing with Twin Motion, because it's made by Epic Games, um, obviously we've got Unreal Engine as the power behind the scene. But I think you'll all agree, um, Unreal Engine is absolutely amazing, but very complex. Twin Motion is got a very nice simplistic interface and just makes, you know, setting up your views, your animations and your visuals much, much easier perhaps than Unreal Engine would do. So here I just wanted to sort of play around with uh, some sort of white card model scenes just to see how those might look. And one nice thing about doing this is all of the uh, people that I've added basically are now just shown as sort of, you know, kind of like not detailed sort of business people and you can't really see the level of detail, but I think you'll agree they look quite good actually. 
So the nice thing about the clay rendering style is you can actually disable it so that it doesn't show things like the uh, other materials like the trees and the environments. Uh, everything is shown normally apart from just those people there. So I had the idea that I could maybe go into things like the Sketchfab library and just add a bit more detail. So I was searching things like dragons and other things that, you know, kind of mythical things that would suit this fancy scene. And I did find some really cool content. Um, some of the Sketchfab stuff comes in um, the wrong scale, but don't worry about it. You can just scale those up or down as required. You can see this dragons come in and basically I can still go in and deselect bits of the model I don't need. So that's pretty cool. You know, I'm left with this uh, really cool little kind of dragon element that I can kind of position in my scene and basically move and rotate as required. So if you have got more time, I definitely recommend some of the Sketchfab content, uh, maybe also some of the mega scans as well, just to kind of like introduce excellent uh, bits of detail and for things like you know the dragons and stuff like this that you're not going to find in the native twin motion library this was a really really good little asset so there's definitely lots of amazing models and things that are available for you as part of the twin motion asset library with sketchfab as well of course don't forget in the characters there's also some sort of you know, birds and horses and other basic elements that you can bring in. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and set up an animation now. So I've gone into my media doc, I've basically clicked on the plus sign, and all I need to do here is set up a bunch of keyframes. Um, got a couple of items there I don't need, that was from the snowy image, so I can hide those. And basically, let's kind of move through to a different position, and when I'm ready, I can basically click an additional keyframe. Now I'm going to kind of fly the camera up a bit into a sort of almost like an aerial view. I'm just going to try to keep clicking as many sort of keyframes as I need to get the kind of cinematic visuals that I'm looking to create. So here we are up on the top of this tower, looking over the amazing landscape in the background. Um, now I can sort of zoomed in a bit. I definitely feel like I need to uh, do a bit more work up on this top section. You know, just improve materials. So this is a fairly sort of non-linear workflow. You know, you work on the materials, you work on the lighting. Uh, definitely once you've set your visuals, your cameras and your animations up, you can then spot all the things that could be improved and the extra things that you want to kind of work on. But the good thing is, you know, you're not wasting time doing things that will never be seen by the camera. So you can see this is really nice little approach. Um, one other thing that I really want to do is increase the amount of time so that will make the animation a bit smoother and then also maybe the lighting. So what you need to do is just basically go through each keyframe just adjusting the time of day ever so slightly maybe an hour at a time and that will mean the sun moves as you move the camera giving a really nice feeling of motion and time passing as you actually move through that kind of animation sequence. Of course, the environment and everything changes. So let's review the final images that I created as part of this fun little tutorial. I think you'll agree uh, the end results came out pretty well for the time that I actually use. So now that Epic Games have announced that Twin Motion is pretty much free for everybody earning under a million dollars, which I imagine is most people probably, it means that you can basically try this fantastic software for free. So reach out to me if I can help you shortcut your learning process with some online teaching and training. And normally I find within two or three hours of training, people are absolutely flying with everything that Twinmotion can offer. So, you know, a really great investment in your skills for visualization and to save you lots and lots of time having to learn the software over months and years. So I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It's been honestly super fun to make. Um, you know, I love Lord of the Rings and as I say, this was something that I wanted to pay homage to Adam Zed's wonderful model. So, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching everybody, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.